I'm Jody. I'm here with Owen. Owen is works for Microsoft. He is the U.S. training for Windows and Office. So thanks for, so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, last month we were back here with Owen, and he was talking about Windows 10. So tell us what you're going to talk about today. Sure. So today we're going to talk about Windows 10 and the Fall Creators Update, which is our most recent feature update to Windows 10. It unlocks a ton of new features for people who are using Windows. We're going to look at a couple of those things today. Great. And I know they have a video that shows off some of the features that are showing today, like a sneak peek of more of the 3D. That's right. Exactly. Most of our 3D features in, in the Creators Update. Let's okay. take a look. Great. So we'll look at the video and then we'll be back. Cool. Those, those are some really cool things that you can do. Should be fun. Yeah, so uh, tell the, me about the basics of Creators, Fall Creators Update. Absolutely. So Fall Creators Update was released on October 17th. It's available now for consumers who are running Windows 10 devices. It's an automatic update that will come through Windows Updates. So as long as your PC is connected to the web and that you're up to date, this is going to come through automatically. Uh, PCs that you can purchase at Costco.com or in Costco warehouses either have the update already or will automatically download that update naturally. Great. And so what are some features? So features that we're going to show off today primarily are going to be how we can pin websites that we frequent to our taskbar, so one-click access to the things we care about most. We'll look at a few of the 3D features and how we can customize stuff inside of Paint 3D and leverage art from the Remix3D.com community. And then we're going to take a little bit of time to, to look at gaming on Windows 10 and how Xbox integrates across to a PC platform. Right. I heard there's some cool gaming features. There are. There's a ton of great ones. We're going to look at uh, game mode, which is how you can play your games and dedicate system resources to the game that you're playing in one click. We're going to look at game bar, which is a natural uh, pop-up that comes across the game that allows you to interact with features and, um, and settings that you might use as a game streamer or somebody who's playing games. Uh, and then we're also going to play a little Forza 7 as well. Should be fun. Okay, and so what are some new and exciting products? Sure. So uh, I brought two to show you today. Okay. Um, and then we've got a couple more to talk about as well that are available okay. in Costco warehouses. The first one we're going to show off, we'll show off most of our 3D features, and it's the one we just watched the video on. Okay. This is the HP Envy. This is the 13 inch model. So it's available in this size, but then Costco also has the 15 inch and the 17 inch as well. So depending upon how much screen real estate you like, you get a larger or smaller device. Um, in addition to that, we're going to talk about uh, the Asus Republic of Gamers, which is a gaming PC made by Asus, and it's got a ton of great features for gamers. In addition to this PC, Costco has a number of great gaming PCs, like the Acer Nitros, Lenovo Legion series as well. Um, this is just one of the great options that we can share today um, for gaming. Great, I'm excited to see all those demos. So for technical support, where do our fans go for that? Sure. Um, so if you're using a Windows product, you'd want to use support.microsoft.com okay. um, and you'd get a, a full array of support there, whether it's Windows or Office, links to each. Great. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our demo and, and I'm excited for you to share some great tips with our fans cool. today. Sounds great. All right, let's take a look. 
I'll start here on our, uh, our HP Envy. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you today is again, frequent websites, things that you go to mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so we're going to use Costco.com and uh, pin this to our taskbar. So the things that I use most frequently live right here in my taskbar and I can keep them for quick easy access at any time I need. Open up an internet browser and go to Costco.com. I love how you pick Costco.com, thanks. Good choice. <laughs> So once I have a website that I'm interested or that I'm gonna go back to frequently, mm -hmm. I wanna put it in that taskbar. I go over to this ellipsis menu here, which is the three dots on the okay. far right. I'll select that and scroll down to pin, pin this page to the taskbar. Okay. And it's going to pin the page automatically to the taskbar. I'm gonna close it out so I can show you. It's also gonna assign it a logo based on the site that you're on. So it gives us our, our nice Costco seat. And anytime that we wanna relaunch that page, we just click it, it'll automatically launch us to the page that we've pinned to taskbar. So quick, easy access. And this is a fall creators update feature that allows you to use this naturally inside of Edge, which is the browser in Windows 10, mm -hmm. uh, which is the fastest browser available for Windows 10 platform. Great, so that seems really easy. So you go up to the top. That's right, top right up sure here. I remember, and you, the three uh, dots, you yep. click that, and then you go down here to pin this page to my taskbar. That's right. It's very easy. Yeah, you can also pin it to start. I think taskbar is the quickest way to access okay. it. But the start menu is another place that you can pin this tile and you can have it here assorted as well. But okay. quick access right here in the taskbar. Great, love it. The next feature we're gonna show off today is Paint 3D. Uh, a lot of folks are very familiar with Paint. It mm -hmm. was one of the first Windows applications that a lot of us got familiar with. Okay. It allows us to create in a 2D environment. Paint 3D takes that from Paint 2D mm -hmm. to the 3D stage. So now we can create in all three dimensions, leverage art from others mm -hmm. in that Remix3D.com community, and bring it in to either complement or share the artwork that we've created. So I'm going to start with a fresh canvas here. And one of the things that we should start with is probably the 3D shapes. So let's add in a 3D object. You like dogs, Judy? Yes, I do. I actually have a new puppy named Louie. Perfect. And is Louis Brown? Yes, he is. Okay. So he's an English Springer Spaniel. Nice choice. Very cute. All right. So let's make our dog brown. We're going to use some of our, introduce you here to some of our default paint tools okay. uh, that we can use. It's called brushes. <clears throat> and a lot of folks are familiar with uh, the ink markers, the felt pens, the watercolor, and also the fill tool, which still exists here in Paint 3D. So I'll use this fill tool, and we'll select our color as brown, and we'll make Louis brown. Oop, gotta get the whole one. There we go. Oh, God. So now Louis brown. So we filled him with a brown color, which is a great base. What I wanna show you first about this object is that it is a 3D object. So I can move him around in this environment as many ways as I'd like. Um, by selecting him, I added another one. I can move him forward and backward across here to the canvas. So if I want to make him come out the ways mm -hmm. from the canvas, I can bring him out a little bit here. Rotate him on all six axes, so around in a circle. Rotate him side to side, or around to his nose. So let's get him squared up here so he's <clears throat> facing us. That works. Now, um, Louie's a brown dog, but he probably has fur. Yes, so <laughs> one of the great things that we can look at here in Paint 3D is the stickers tool, which you can see across the top there. Okay. Stickers lets me apply a number of different things to the 3D art that I'm creating, uh, but I can also apply some textures. <clears throat> so this may or may not look exactly like it's fur, but let's grab this fur option here and we will place it on the dock and then we can expand it. And one thing you'll notice here is as I'm placing it on him, it's wrapping to the 3D image, so it's not just fur on top mm -hmm. of an image, it actually clings to the image of what we're trying to um, texturize. So we will make him furry all over. And when we're ready to put this on the dog, we just need to hit the stamp function here on the right. That stamps it down and keeps it on the shape. So now as I move this shape around in its 3D environment, the fur clings to him and it, it matches the object that we've placed. Wow. So that's one great way to use texture inside of stickers. Okay. Um, we can also add other things uh, such as eyes or glasses. So uh, let's add some eyes for Louis here. That's a big one. <laughs> we'll 
we'll shrink it down a little bit. So it's a 2D object that stays off until I bring it onto the 3D shape and then it clings and then I can stamp it to the object so it stays square. We'll add another one here, stamp it on, there we go. And so now Louis has two eyes as well. So we're creating great 3D shapes. Um, I'm not a, an amazing artist by any means, but I can create some awesome stuff in Paint 3D uh, that you can share out. But because I'm not that amazing artist, I can leverage work that's already been created by others from the Remix3D.com community. You'll see that across the top on the right here. Okay. Um, and Remix3D lets me look at art that's already been created, other online 3D models, um, both from Microsoft and just other users out in the Remix3D community. So if I go to animals, we can add in a friend for our dog. Oh good, he needs a friend. He's a friend. Uh, what kind of friend do you think he'd like? Uh, bear? Girl, he's, oh, oh, I guess it can't be another. Maybe a giraffe. A giraffe, perfect. All right, <laughs> so to select the giraffe, all I had to do was click on it. Okay. And it's gonna insert this 3D object into my heart. Now it's, right now it's on top of the dog, so let's move it on over here to the side. And we can resize it to however large we want it to be. And this has the same properties as, as the dog, where we can move it forward and backward in the environment mm -hmm. and across all axes. And we can rotate him around to see a little bit more of his shape as well. So this is an excellent example of how somebody who uses Paint 3D mm -hmm. with the Fall Creators Update can leverage art from others at that Remix3D.com community and bring it in to create something that's really stunning that may be beyond their personal capabilities, uh, but uses public and available art. And do you find like a lot of students are using this, businesses using this? Yeah, people are using it, uh, mostly I would say students and creators, mm -hmm. um, but it's being used to create 3D images that can then be leveraged in other ways. So mm -hmm. I'll show you in a moment here how I can take a 3D object <clears throat> and move it into a PowerPoint uh, slide and document. Mm -hmm. And that lets me uh, focus in on different areas of the object or move the object around as a whole so mm -hmm. I can get different angles on what I'm looking to talk about. Great. Can I show you that now? Yes, please. Cool. So to do this, I'm going to open up a document that we've pre-created on the Hubble telescope. Let's close this out and reopen it here. So inside of PowerPoint, we can now add those 3D objects and use them to tell a very rich story about whatever it may be that we're looking to mm -hmm. present. <clears throat> In this case, the Hubble telescope. So it looks like a nice 2D object that's here um, photographing Earth. But as I select it, you can see that it has a lot of those rotational tools that we mm -hmm. used in Paint 3D. And as I grab that, I can rotate it around and we can get different oh, wow. angles on the object. So um, it really comes to life and shows off all the features of the Hubble telescope's camera or of its other features. Let me show you as I progress through the deck here. Um, this is a closer look at the solar panels on the Hubble telescope. And then as I move through, we also look at the communications antennas. So I'll put this in presentation mode and show you how this comes to life. We've got this transition called morph inside of PowerPoint, and it creates cinematic movement from slide to slide. Okay. So instead of it being just a slide and then another slide, it's gonna keep properties on the slide that stayed or may be rotated, and it's gonna show them moving in that cinematic function. Okay, so slide one, this is the angle that we chose for the Hubble. Okay. We go to the next. And now we're rotating that 3D object and taking a closer nice. look at its solar panels. Another rotation will take us to its communications mm -hmm. antennas. And then through to its aperture door. That's so really this is slick. <laughs> pretty cool, right? It's, it's a great way to highlight individual features or functions of what you're looking to tell the story about, mm -hmm. but get close up on exactly the component that we're looking to talk about. So whether it's the Hubble telescope mm -hmm. or something else that you're doing a research paper on or uh, presenting a PowerPoint deck on, to make sure we focus on the objects that are going to matter most. Okay, so next we were going to show off some of our gaming functions and for that I am going to need a controller. Okay. Hang on just a moment here. Got it. Okay, great. Okay, so. You want to scoot over by me? Uh, no, I'll just stay okay. right here. This is okay. What next I'm gonna show is on this Asus Republic of Gamers laptop. Okay. So I need to switch the input over so we can see what's going on on the screen here. Bear with me for just a moment. And this is specific for gamers? This is a great PC choice for gamers. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about a gaming PC is that it is a, it's just a PC, right? That has extra horsepower and extra graphics processing. So you can use it for gaming, mm -hmm. but it's also excellent for just getting work done. 
So you could use any of the same things that you could on a standard Windows PC on this gaming PC, but because it has some extra graphics performance and extra processing power, I can do some great things like Play Force 7 on it. So it's awesome for multitasking and using for gaming. Technical difficulty. Let me reopen that. Well, I like the screensaver. Thanks. <laughs> Beautiful fall colors. Getting into the fall season. So before we actually play Forza 7, you can see here it says press Windows G to open game bar. And this is one of the functions and features I wanted to show off today. Okay. So as I press Windows G on the keyboard, okay. I get all of these functions across that are going to show me how I can interact with my game and optimize it and stream it for those who are streaming their gameplay online, etc. So the game bar pops up when I press Windows G and hides as soon as I move my mouse. But quickly here, I can take photos of my gameplay if I want to show off something cool that I did, mm -hmm. record my gameplay. If I want to share it with the Xbox community or my Xbox friends list, they can see what I'm playing and how I'm playing it. And also, I can stream a live broadcast of my gameplay. So people who want to follow along and watch what I'm doing can quickly just log into my broadcast and watch, much like our Facebook live stream. This feature here is called Game Mode. And this is a one-click button that's going to automatically optimize the system resources on the PC okay. to the game that I'm playing. So it knows that it's a game, it knows that I want it to play great, um, and then it's going to give me the best experience that this PC could possibly give me mm -hmm. for that experience. Nice. So as we launch Forza 7 here, I'll get us started. You know, with, with Forza 7 makes Xbox the home of racing, and the beautiful thing about Xbox Play Anywhere or XPA titles like this mm -hmm. is that I can take my games on the road, I can play on my PC with just an Xbox controller. It's very, very portable. And that just hooks up to the... Yeah, it's wirelessly connected yeah, right that's now. nice. So I don't have to do much other than um, make sure it's connected and it's good to go. Make sure we have a car that we could use for this. Oops. So for all our Facebook fans, if you like this game, then click like right now. We'll know how many people are liking this. It's a great chance for that. This game is sold at Costco and on Costco.com. So for folks who would like to interact with the game, they can grab the title there. Um, let's start out with this 2018 Porsche. 911 GT2 RS. This car has kind of a cool story to it. Um, it was, sorry, let's rent a different one here, give me a BMW instead. Um, so this, this GT2 RS was actually introduced at E3, so where most car manufacturers will introduce a car um, on stage at a car show, mm -hmm. um, you know, Forza took the opportunity to debut a new car exclusive to this game at E3 when this game was announced. So people who are big fans of uh, the Porsche cars or of Forza could experience this car for its very first time unveiled at that show. So it's a pretty cool that feature. That is really cool. Now we're going to race it on the Dubai track. Dubai is great. Um, this is a real track. So each one of these tracks are mapped down to the millimeter. Um, with some high-tech mapping software that makes sure that the tracks are very realistic, they perform like they do in real life. Uh, in fact, Dubai was actually so hot when they were mapping this track, some of the camera architecture was melting to the track. It's interesting, right? Yes. So it takes just a moment to launch, but you can see I've got my Forza, Forza driver here about to hop in his car, get ready to go. I'll step out so you can see the game okay. a little bit here. So as I was saying about Xbox Play Anywhere, this is a title that I can play on my Xbox or play on my Windows PC, but when I climb into the car on the other platform, whichever I was not playing on last, I pick up right where I left off. I get that same experience, the same achievements, the same game progression, all in a different environment. Now is that normal to have that feature where you get to go right where you left off? Or is it this is, a new feature? It's great for uh, Xbox Play Anywhere titles, so not all titles have those features, um, but many that are Xbox Play Anywhere allow you to play across both. So this is a view inside the car, and you can see how realistic it is. It feels very much like I'm horribly driving a Porsche about into a wall here. 
I can change my camera angles as well to get a different view so I can see more of the car as I play. Are you good at this game? I'm okay. I'm okay. I've got some friends who are a little better than I. Kind of makes you dizzy a little bit if you're not playing and you're watching. <laughs> a lot of screen motion as I drive around here. Yeah, it seems real. real. Very realistic, yeah. yeah. So, unprecedented realism out of Forza Motorsports 7. You feel like you're really driving these cars. So I'll pause there. So you can see, beautiful gameplay, amazing cars, and I can play this on my Windows 10 PC or pick it up where I left off when I get home from my Xbox. That's amazing. Not bad, right? That's the last demo I have for us today, Jim. Great. Well, do you have some interesting facts you would like to share with us? Sure. Um, so as we talked about for Fall Creators Update, it's available now. Um, for folks who already have Windows 10 but don't have the Fall Creators Update yet, they can download the Fall Creators Update directly from their Windows 10 PC in the Windows Updates. Mm -hmm. So Start and Settings and Windows Update will take you to the most recent version of Windows and unlock a lot of these great features for you. Exciting. Yeah, well, thanks so much for sharing this with us today. Absolutely. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I know we're going to be back in, in uh, I think, another four or five weeks to talk about another product. Yep. We'll show off a few more new features and get us ready for, for holiday, new PC assortment for Costco, um, all of these with Intel 8th generation processors available as well. Yeah, wonderful. I appreciate that. Well, thank you, Owen. And we will be back on Thursday. We're actually going to be back in a farm where we're going to be talking about uh, Opal Apple. Um, apples. I don't know if you've heard of those before, Never. but um, we went to a farm once and we got a ride in the back of a pickup truck, so I'm thinking maybe we'll be on a tractor this time. So I hope you'll join us on Thursday, and thanks so much again, Owen. Thanks, Judy.